Okay, I found a few minutes of calm, and um, I just thought I would uh, get started on something here. We talked about getting into the um, Christmas spirit and Christmas carols, and um, I chose to do a version of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, kind of using a, a low drop D, having a... Uh, an arrangement down in the lower register, which um, kind of has a unique sound. So we're going to drop the D. That means we're going to drop this low E string down to D. I think we've done that before. Okay, so as we start the arrangement, it's pretty straightforward. And my plan is, is just to lay down a foundation on which to build um, and embellish the melody uh, as we play it several times through each time, embellishing it a little bit more and making it a little bit more interesting, which is a common technique when um, playing songs that are somewhat short and simple, you make them interesting by embellishing them uh, as you go through them time after time. So we're going to start with the open D then we have the three open strings then the second fret on the G string and we're just basically going to play through um, the melody in a single note style. So I'll just do that up to the next chord Notice we're kind of getting a, uh, I don't know, kind of a little bit of a Gaelic sound, you know, the uh, Irish sound there, because we're using chords without thirds, just the fifths. Now, when you're playing this arrangement the first time through, it's kind of wants to have a free form feel, a, a, a free feel. So when you're playing it, um, you can play the melody a little bit slower, a little bit faster, like this. And then we'll slow down here when we get to the A chord. I'll do that again. up to that A chord, you could slow it down a little bit, listen to that, slow it down a little bit, and when I play that A chord, kind of breaking it up, da -da -da. Um, the next phrase would be similar. So I'm going to go ahead and play from the beginning. So what, what I'm saying in there is you can play with your dynamics, play with your speed, and playing that melody. So there's uh, room for creativity, room for self-expression, all that sort of thing when you're playing uh, the arrangement in this particular style. So that's kind of what we're shooting for is uh, just having that free form, expressive rendition of the song. So as you learn it, because it is fairly simple, think more about that type of thing. That is, how do you want to play it? Do you want to play it loud, soft, quick, slow? However you want to do it, 
that's what this sort of arrangement is going to allow for. Okay, one more time up to that second A chord, then I'll continue. Okay, then after I get to that A chord there, the next A note, which is that uh, second fret of the G string, I'm going to play that with my first finger. And then when I get to the next chord, I'll just slide my first finger up, drop my ring finger down onto the low G, and that ring finger will kick out that A string. So I end up with the G, the open D, and that third fret of the G string, which happens to be a B flat. So switching to the first finger and then playing that G minor chord. And then lifting up the first finger. Now what I'm going to try to do to get that second fret is just stretch back with that first finger. So I can, the reason I'm doing it that way is I'm trying to keep the chord ringing. I'm going to play from the beginning to there. Switching to the first finger. Okay, now if you find that is, you know, it is a pretty good stretch. Um, so if you have trouble doing that, if you got to bring that finger off, if you have to bring the ring finger off, try to keep that D string ringing though, if you have to take that ring finger off. slide that ring finger all the way down to the second fret like this and then the open string okay I'm going to take it from the second measure of the third line color and effect. Talking more about, you know, getting some different sounds and using some different techniques in the arrangement rather than just playing straight notes. We could play this arrangement all right down here, play it very strict and very bop, 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 and that's okay, okay? But this proves to uh, be more interesting, more fun, and just incorporates some guitar techniques that we can use in order to make the arrangement sound a little bit more interesting. Taking it from that same spot again. Okay, and then the open string. Next chord. to the fourth line, C chord. Then when we play the third fret of that D string, just drop the pinky back to the open string. So that first measure on the fourth line, C chord, one, two, three, four. Once again, striving to have that chord ring. Take it from the second measure of the third line, the G minor chord. Slide. 
chord, chord, pinky. Okay, so before we get into the next section on that F chord, I'm going to play it once again from the beginning. Kind of roll that chord. Switching to the first finger. Slide. Now we come to the F chord, and I'm going to leave my ring finger right where it is, drop the pinky onto the third fret of the D string, bring the middle finger up to the third fret of the low D in this case, and drop the first finger. Okay, it's a little crunched up in there, but pretty doable because we're down on the first fret. And then when I play the next two notes, I'll just lift up my pinky play that 3-2, then I'll take these two fingers here and bring them down to play that A chord, lift up the ring finger, drop the ring finger, lift up the ring finger. That's that measure, trying to keep things ringing. the open D chord, back to the C chord, pinky drops, leaving the ring finger once again, going to that F chord, dropping the pinky, dropping the middle finger down, and then the first finger is on the second fret. So there's my F chord. Then I'm going to bring my pinky down, play that third fret, move the first finger over, drop the pinky. I'll play that measure again. Once again, I'm trying to hold this. Then again, taking these two fingers, bringing them to the A chord. Open, three, two, open D chord. Let me play that from the beginning. Switching to the first finger. Let me play it one more time without any commentary, just so you can hear how it comes together.
slow down there on that last measure. And then if you want for some color, bring your ring finger up to the 12th fret and do a harmonic on those three, three low strings, just barely touching. When you do your harmonics, um, like if you're doing a 12th fret harmonic, you want to kind of push the finger over this fret a little bit more, you'll get a little bit better harmonic. And back here, not quite as good, I'm kind of in the middle of the fret, leaning towards the um, fret this way. But if I come more this way, then I get a louder and clearer harmonic. So coming off that, those last two measures, you can add that harmonic for color. You could even, if you wanted to, since you're slowing down there, you could go straight to the harmonic like this. That's nice too, right? Okay, so here's the things you want to look for when you're playing this. Once again, you want to try to have, let the chords ring as much as possible. As you're playing the notes, trying to let the chords ring. Okay? Um, and then the, just the idea of once you become familiar with the tab, um, this is pretty simple because I want you to think more about just how you want to play it. So remember, that's a big component of what we're doing here, is just that creativity, messing around with dynamics, messing around with uh, tempo, speed, because we're kind of playing it this first time through in, in a very free-form fashion. So have the chords ring express the melody the way that you want to and um, have fun with it and we'll build on it from there um, and of course you know if you have any questions about any of the techniques um, feel free to ask and we'll talk to you soon <laughs>